for that particular athlete is a very good thing. It helps to get the folks back on track and limits how discouraged they can actually be from the injury. Patient education is important. We want the patient to be part of the treatment plan and having the patient have an understanding of what their injury is, what their treatment options are, it helps them to get back to the sport that they love. We have doctors with all different uh, specialties within sports medicine, state-of-the-art concussion care, regenerative medicine, and then of course we have our orthopedic surgeons. If something needs to be fixed, uh, we can fix it, more than likely in a minimally invasive uh, fashion. With the arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures, we're able to do much of this surgery inside the joint without having to damage any of the surrounding tissue. It allows an athlete to return to sports much quicker. We're seeing an excellent result with regenerative medicine. Ligament injuries that would normally have taken six to eight weeks, now we're seeing two to three week recovery periods. It gives me great pleasure to be able to treat an athlete and see them succeed back on the field. The wait is over. Your connection is here. In areas all over Sussex County, Planet Networks Fiber is now a reality. In Sparta, Newton, Hampton, Lafayette, Andover, Byram, and Franklin, we've begun installing high-speed fiber in these towns, and it's changing everything. Much faster, more reliable, and less expensive than your current plan. Don't settle for slow. Planet Networks Fiber is up to 300 times faster than your cable company and up to 500 times faster than your phone company for less money. If you see one of these flyers on your door, your home is ready to be connected. If you want Planet Networks to build in your neighborhood, visit GetPlanetFiber.com and let us know. We'll build where the demand is greatest. It's a new day in Sussex County, and the internet will never be the same. Get connected at GetPlanetFiber.com. That's GetPlanetFiber.com. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. Rich Latman. Realtor with Keeneland Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com. So it's been four years since I got the Neograft hair transplant procedure done, and I look and feel good when I look in the mirror. Guys, I know there's a lot of cures out there for hair loss, but the best solution is to ask your doctor about the Neograft hair transplant. There's no linear scar, little to no downtime, and it's your own hair going back on your head, and that is amazing. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Nussbaum. If you're struggling with thinning hair or hair loss, we can help you. Visit us at MyFullHair.com. That's MyFullHair.com. Semino and Philippone is a New Jersey-based law firm with offices in Morristown and Hazlitt, devoted to providing quality legal representation and personal attention in the areas of residential and commercial real estate, estate planning, and personal injury. Contact Joe Philippone at 732-203-0060 or by email at jphilippone at cf hyphen lawfirm.com I was born fast Parisi made me faster 
I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. At IV Rehab, we're here for you after your surgery. We're here when you're in a rush. When you're in pain. When you're aching. When you don't have a prescription. <sighs> we're here to get to the root cause of your pain instead of just masking your symptoms. We're here. We are here. We're over there too. We're all over. So come to IV Rehab first. We'll be here for you. Loja Cohen LLC is a law firm located in Chester, New Jersey. Although we are local, we provide legal services to businesses, entrepreneurs, governmental entities, and school boards statewide. We provide big firm quality work, but do so with a small firm feel and flexible pricing structure. Our specialties include employment law, labor relations, and commercial litigation. At Loja Cohen, we are proud to support the local athletes in our community. Growing up, Brian Riley absolutely loved sports and competition. He remembers his dad telling him that if he wanted to be better, he needed to practice more and work harder. So in high school, when he heard the Vince Lombardi quote, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. It truly resonated with him and that work ethic has translated into serving his clients better than many in the financial field. While Brian's industry experience and credentials are vast, he's quick to tell his clients, the fact that there are a bunch of letters behind my name doesn't mean that I'm smarter than anyone else. It simply means that I've been willing to take the time to invest in myself so that I could better serve them. And for me, being of service to others is the single most important thing in my life today. Getting the opportunity to work closely with families and businesses with complex needs, helping them to define their long-term goals, and providing them with meaningful solutions is a thrill for Brian. It makes him feel like he's back on the athletic field again. For a free financial consultation, contact Brian Riley at bryley at financialguide.com or call him at 973-738-4248. The Nussbaum Weight Loss Center is actually designed to help patients whether they have 5 pounds to lose or 500 pounds to lose. They're very helpful with um, explaining everything. You feel very comfortable. They walk you through everything. I am now the person I always knew I was inside. I lost about 100 pounds. Altogether, I've lost 80 pounds. I lost about 100 pounds. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nussbaum, for giving me my life back. I'm Dr. Michael Nussbaum. If you're struggling to lose weight, call us at the Nussbaum Weight Loss Centers. Your future, it's on. Goals are on. Learning is on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Online. On point. On your terms. Over 80 majors. Major hope. My career guidance. Number one in alumni salaries in New Jersey. Success, it's on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Sign up now for summer and fall semesters.
My name is Stephanie Ramirez. I'm 28 years old. I struggled with weight my whole life. I had the gastric sleeve done. I lost a total of 100 pounds. I'm actually healthier. No more diabetes, no more hypertensive. I would definitely recommend Dr. Nesbaum. Your weight may not be your fault. It could be a metabolic or hormonal problem. To learn more, come in for a free seminar. Go to NussbaumMedicalCenters.com or call 973-998-9833 to schedule a consultation. Welcome you to Menin Arena here in Marstown, New Jersey, and Mars Sussex Sports coverage of the Mars County Secondary Schools Ice Hockey League. It is a Halverson Division matchup, numbers two and three in that division. The Roxbury Gales against the Men to Minutemen on Minutemen Senior Night here at Menin Arena. Brent Luther, Sean Bretherick, Jordan Catelli doing the production here tonight, and Sean, uh, as I'm going to adjust my stuff just a little bit, it's. Uh, Promising to be a good one between these two teams who are pretty evenly matched overall. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how things turn out here. Uh, senior nights are always a little more special. Um, they got several players um, being um, honored here tonight, including the man in between the pipes, Mr. Uh, Tim Tambawala. So we'll, be, we'll see how he is doing this evening. Of course, you know, it's a, a bit of a spe more of a special night, a little more of an emotional night. Um, we'll see how the goaltender uh, is able to uh, fare with that. Um, goaltenders have to have nerves of steel, if you will. Yep. So we'll have to see how he does with a little extra emotional hype up with tonight. So we will, of course, with their senior night, we'll track the four of them as they come out to center ice or the blue line, if you will, and get their pictures. And we'll give you a little snippets about each one of them. There's bios on the four that we have uh, a little more in-depth variety here tonight as both teams finish up getting their warm-ups in but before we talk about the Mendham seniors Roxbury comes in uh, and uh, again three and three overall uh, three and three in the, in the Halverson I should say six and four overall and just looking to get those extra points to stay ahead of Mendham they're probably going to face each other in the semifinals anyway, but, of course, you want that last line change and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, Those those are more important than a lot of people lead on to believe. And, you know, there should be a lot of risk-taking, a lot of aggression by both of these teams, teams that can score. Uh, and I think it's going to be high-powered, and it's going to be – Early and often, I think, on both sides. Uh, you're going to now open up the crowd mic. Is, uh, they are going to soon honor the four seniors here. Attention fans, this evening, Menda Maisaki would like to recognize their senior players. First up, we have number, number six, Kyle Vongas. Kyle Vongas first played organized hockey when he was 12 years old for the Chester Menda Minutemen Rec team. He Number comes 19, out to center ice. Joe Palace, a defenseman. He also began skating at six years old in Chubb Park in Chester. He began to play at nine years old Number for West Mars. Tim Tambuala Tim has been playing for 10 years, beginning as a squirt with the Valley Forge Colonials Team in Pennsylvania. Number 26, Cameron Wheel. And Cameron Wheel, the captain, started his hockey playing when he was nine years old. After going to watch the Devils Congratulations, game. Congratulations, seniors. Good luck in all your future endeavors. So they will get a picture taken on center ice there. I don't realize the photographer is going to take the pictures off to their left. But, um, yeah, these are the four seniors. And as we go along, we'll post their pictures and get them going on uh, here tonight. A little bit of a senior spotlight, if you will. We got pictures lined up for that. We'll get that going as the night goes on. But there is hockey to be played. 
Men and men in their new white jerseys. I've only worn them a couple times. Same for Tim Tambawala, the goaltender, who is in the, the more traditional uh, Mendham white jersey, but still with his number 33 on the back. They're going to be going from left to right. Roxbury in the Navy jerseys, trimmed in gold and white. They're going from right to left. Similar, similar colors as the United States Naval Academy. Puck has been dropped. We are underway here, and a long shot's going to be padded aside early on by Ryan Callahan. And that's going to be the task tonight is for Mendham to get pucks past Callahan, who has been a tough opposition to deal with for many clubs. This goes behind the net, gathered here by the number 22 of Kyle Jenkins. Steps out, pass on, off, foul the way down. This is going to be icing early on. As we said, Tambawala, that's a, that's a vintage type of Mendham jersey at this point. Okay, good look at that. Old school D. Yep. Face off controlled by Mendham. Maybe after a save or whatnot, we'll get another look at that yeah. sharp jersey. <laughs> Puck goes around the boards, gathered by the number four, Blake Stevens, up and out the center. So Mendham started most of their seniors, started all their seniors. Yep. Vongas and Aikenhead were the defensemen, Vongas the senior there. Palace and Wheel, the forwards, all seniors, along with Griffin Josephek, number 15. And Tambawala, of course, the senior in goal. Roxbury had counted with Gavin Woodenberg and Kyle Jenkins in the back. Jake Cuyenga, Brian Westergaard, and Nick Thomas up front. That'll be the line, the forward line to watch out for tonight for the Gales. And Ryan Callahan, as oh. we had said, in net. Big old collision. Bowling pins going down. No 7-10 split there. Instead, a puck dumped in and around the boards. Near side of the ice, gathered by the number two of Chase McGowan. Puts back around the boards, but not out of his zone. And collected here is Joe Ivel, number three. Long pass is deflected and back into the Gale zone. We had a game earlier today between Morristown and Chatham that was, and that was, in a, that was a men in division matchup, and this already feels like it has more pace to it. Yeah, a little bit more pace. Uh, a little more motivation on you know, an evening game. That could have been it. And a big senior night two situation yeah. as well on one side of it. And, Roxbury, we've seen it here the last few times. They've just been playing super hard. Ryan Callahan's been the, the catalyst in that. A lot of the players have been playing very hard in front of them. Again with Mendham. If they're playing, if they play their game, and which is very good defensively, putting the pressure on the puck, if they play that game, they are difficult to deal with, which will make this so fascinating. Right now, Mendham's got the only two shots on goal. That might change, though, on the turnover. A shot that goes wide, rebound to the near side boards, and out will go the Minutemen. A check put on, oh. hit, put on by Stephen Keene, number eight, putting Blake Stevens to the ice. Puck goes around the board and gets stopped in the corner there. Jenkins heels back the other way and starts up ice. Kyle Jenkins. Trying to move in, gets across the line, but lost the puck in doing so. Kicked ahead in the other direction by Matt Cooley, number 23. And onside skate in the zone for Cooley. Centering pass in front of the same made by Callahan off the attempt down low by Michael Gianco, number 28. Yeah, first set up there from Mendham. Check that, it was the 23 of Matt Cooley. We'll give and go. Turned over. Number 26 is Cameron Wheel. Onside a blast, steered aside by the goal stick of Ryan Callahan. Rebound comes out to center, quickly slung right back in. Delayed offside, I thought I heard no. There is no, no. offside. I was uh, thinking there was some noises, but we're good. Touch pass is off the mark, sent in down low by Cooley. Around the boards for Jenkins, he puts it off the wall for Robert, uh, for check that, for Kevin Baru in number 21. Baru off the wall, Sean Hardy number four. Quickly back in behind the net. So once again, Jenkins around the boards. This will go up and all the way down, but no icing. He's not able to play it with Sean Catter, number 10. They're not calling it. No, he, well, he was right there to play, and he just missed it. And that's why they didn't call it. Body goes down. Four minutes gone by. First period, no score. Tristan Aikenhead, number 11. 
Nice shoulder to shoulder contact along those boards behind the net. Ian Tambawala, number 25. Or check that, it was the 15. These numbers are a little bit more difficult to read. 15 is Griffin Josephak. The 25 out there is Joe D. Domenico. He's trying to set up traffic in front. Puck goes around the boards to the far side of the ice, collected by Kuyenga, but he can't clear his own. D. Domenico helps out, spun around by Chase McGowan, number two, only to his opposite two of Matt Goggin. Goggin throws one across. That missed the mark and out, trying to come Roxbury. It's flipped in from center. Pass missed the mark, and quickly the Gales send the other way, but that's going to be icing, and we get a stoppage of play here. 10 10 to go, first period in a scoreless game. Good start for uh, both of these squads, as it turns out now, but you know, when you're uh, with Roxbury, just trying to get that breakout to go. Right now, Mendham has been doing a good job with their four check. Uh, Roxbury trying to stretch it out a little bit more, try to open it up in the neutral zone. Face off control, then sent in down low by Mendham. Around the boards, first one on it is Randy De Palma, number five. Spins the other way. After this, Jake Kalani, number 14, lost the foot race to Brandon Wienerman. He wears number five for Mendham. Up and out to center. Away goes Ian Tambawala. Weaves his way in across the line. Tambawala throws one towards goal, but keeping the pads steady. That time was Callahan. Tied up, now to the blue line. There's a bless Callahan with the gloves. And he holds on with 9.35 to go in the first. Five straight shots and unanswered so far on the Menem side. Tim Tambawala, they're making his job fairly easy on the early going. It's only a minute of time, though, before the Gales get themselves an opportunity on the other side. Sometimes you just have to weather the initial storm sometimes. Puck comes up and out to center. There's a turnover three on one. Centering feed. Oh, oh. what a save by Callahan. Callahan stretched out the left pad to stop that possibility. We stay scoreless. Just keeping low, making the making the Mendon player have to lift the puck and Honestly, I think it was a little bit too close of range for them to be ever even be able to do so. And just good job again. Callahan just so fundamentally sound as a goaltender. And clearly flexible as well. Puck to the blue line, but that shot bounces wide to the near side boards collected by Sean Hardy and gets up and out to center. Quickly spun back in the other way. Behind the net, here's a pass up the boards and Roxbury looks to break out. That pass misses the mark. Coming back in and getting chipped on the play was Gianco. He goes into the corner with Gavin Woodenberg. Puck spins up and out towards center, and here goes the Roxbury Gales the other way. Chipped in icing, though, as Stephen Keene had not gained the red line, so face off to come with 8.37 to go here in the burst. Off to come to the left of goaltender Ryan Callahan. Spun up the boards out the center, tipped into the zone. After it is Kyle Vongas, number six, and he loses the race to Joe D. Dominica. This goes down, no icing. This turned over in the zone, going now Kuyenga. Tried to center in front. There's a lot of white jerseys surrounding him, though. Finally, the puck picked up by Sean Cato to the blue line, but a shot right into Tambawala's mask. And he drops and covers. Well, there's the first shot. Now maybe we can even get a little bit of a better look here. Yeah. That, well, just when we say that, there's, there's the save, but there's a look at this. Uh, there's a look at that jersey there with the Mendham on the front. Similar type of logo. A classic looking jersey that Tampa Wild's got. 
Someone's doing a Crosby on the ice. <laughs> yeah. On the knee, doing a little shoelace tying. Here's another shot. Now on the other direction. That's behind the net, trying to spin out in front with Stevens. Broken up and now Roxbury the other way. From center, that deflected and Tambuwala was actually having to come back, slide back to his right to make sure that puck didn't go in and then just couldn't do anything more than poke it away. He stumped into the corner. The blue line, that shot, Tambuwala makes the save. Behind the net, spun around the boards by Ian Tambuala. Off to the blue line and out to center. And now here comes Mendham the other way. In front, shot score! Ian Tambuala off the feet in front. And he put it up top over Callahan's shoulder. One nothing, Minutemen. Nothing to it. Tambuala, the, uh, his brother on the other end, you know, some getting some hops off of him. Here's that play, just coming in. Simple play, just pick your shot, aim, shoot, score. And Ian gets one for his brother. His brother, of course, being the senior. One nothing to score. And, uh, always a good thing when you can get that first goal. And as we said, Mendham, they're a difficult team when they're playing their game. And Oh, that's a big collision. Oh. Gianco absorbed it from Barua. Mendham goals for wow. number 25, Ian Tambuala. With an assist from number 13, McCarthy. Time to goal One assist the only, and it goes to the number 13 of Shane McCarthy. So one nothing to score. And now in the other way, another wow. bone crunching hit. The Zamboni wow. door shook. That's going to be a penalty. And here comes the gathering. Now one shot too many there. I think it's going to be slow to get up, but getting up is the number 23 of Matt Cooley. There was a lot going on there. None too happy about it in the number 11, Tristan Aikenhead. One shot too, one, one, one shot there too many against the boards. Here's a look at it. Go. Oh, that's the after effect. Everybody coming in and messing around. Astute Academics of Randolph. Let us help you crush your ACT or, uh, SAT or ACT and stand out to college admissions counselors. Visit astuteacademics.com. I think they're consider I think they're talking about how many minutes this is going to be. Is this just going to be your run of the mill two or are we looking at a five here? It might be more. I'm thinking more than five? No, it might be. Uh, we, we might be five in a game. Not gonna. Not gonna try to. Speak it. They're definitely considering more than two minutes on this one. Uh, the, with the amount of time that they're talking, I would say that's definitely the case. Jack's Landscaping and Excavating Hapakon provides high quality mowing and landscaping at an affordable price. Hapakon surrounding areas call Jack at 862 254 5243. And now we are going to see what's going on. Paul Crosta giving the explanation to the scorer's table while. Oh, Steve Morris is explaining to the captains. Oh, this is Crosta down there. Yes, it is. I thought it's all Crosta. Paul Crosta and Steve Morris are officials here tonight. So, I mean, that Zamboni door shook on the first hit. That's a hard. That's that's very hard to shake. By the way, mm -hmm. there's two people in. By the way, on both there's one person on each side. Yep, I think. You probably said that. I was probably my head was in the clouds for that I one. Don't but. see anything going up on the animosity between the, yeah. between between these two teams. You yeah. can feel it a little bit more. It was there before it, as this is going to be covered up by Callahan. It was there before, and it's just once that goal was scored, the physicality and the intensity picked up, and then after those hits, because 
The first hit into that, in, right by the Zamboni door, was a clean hit. Right. It was the second one, and then that just escalated things even more. Yeah. Cats and dogs living together. Mass hysteria. Chaos. That goes around the board. There's another crunching hit. Just be ready for it tonight. This is going to go all the way down for icing. And we'll get a whistle with 413 to go in the first period. It's going to be it's going to be a physical one tonight, folks. I get feelings this isn't going to stop until the final buzzer. Imagine how, when you know what the rules are as far as how far you can go physically in a, in a, in a game at this level. No job is too big or too small for Gorge Point Plumbing. Contact Rich Muha at 908-339-2430 for amazing service at an affordable price. Just imagine all the bent-up frustration in a game like, like this. That shot knocked aside, rebound far side boards. That'll be pitchforked up and out and all the way down. And it, what I'm getting at is you, you can only get so physical before you know th before you, you you're starting to get your you see yourself you know tacking on suspensions and everything of that nature. Right. You can the, there's just a lot of that frustration and you got to imagine there's going to be a hit here or there that is oh, going yeah. to show that and it won't happen yet. Nice shot. Long shot. 90 footer right into the logo oh, of Tambawala and a little snow afterwards. That was a that was late snow showers right there. Yeah, and there see, you saw uh, Ian Tambawala saying, "Hey, listen, I don't, don't, do my don't do that to my brother. I don't appreciate that very much." Again, he came in late, Steve yeah. King. McCarter's Towing and Rockaway offers 24-hour light and heavy-duty towing, low bed service, special transport services. We move it for you. TRA, nationally certified driver, serving the community since 1972. Call them at 973-627-7220 or go to mccarterstowing.com. This puck will wind its way out to center ice and now into the zone. Rest shot gets the glass. one nothing. Mendham leads this game inside of three minutes to go, first period. The move ahead for Blake Stevens. Throws one towards goal. The Callahan steers aside. In the corner, trying to put it out in front was Marshutes. Turned over off the boards, but not out of the zone. On a keep by Ian Tambawala, who's out himself a first period. Pass comes back. Kyle Jenkins takes a look. Long pass up, and that gets the center. Mm. Jenkins put another man down there. And now out comes Roxbury the other way. Wrist shot bounces wide. Behind oh. the net, getting hauled down. No call there as one of the players got hauled down. That was Nick Thomas. And now here's a three on one the other way. The move in. Pass across is cut off by Callahan. The save made and a big dog pile comes after it. I didn't see who the defenseman was coming back there, but my goodness, what a great job back checking there. I'm, I'm gonna say maybe it might have been D, D Domenico. There's the scrum. Yeah, everybody gathering. But one of the Roxbury players, and I, I didn't catch the jersey number, but just a fantastic job of just cutting off the passing lane on a three on one. He had to hop it and just couldn't hop it enough because of it. Puck put to the point and then spun in down low. One man goes down and Roxbury will clear up and all the way down. This will have legs for icing and a stoppage with 146 to go in period number one. And I'm thinking we're gonna get the long intermission here. You uh, think? Yeah, me thinks. I'm seeing some staff members waiting by the Zamboni doors. <laughs> I mean, I tell you what, going back to that hit, the, the clean hit before, I mean, it, there's a metal rod that keeps those doors closed. And yeah, that, and it shook. That thing, as we like to say with some sticks, that got flexy. Yeah, it, that's just a straight-up bar of metal. Yeah. 
And it, it's not exactly the flimsy metal that you put on like a handrail or something like no, that. No, it's it's That's, it's steel. <laughs> that is. This is all the way down and back for it and spinning it around the boards. It is Matt Goggin. And now out come the Minutemen. Goggin cutting to the net. Here's a shot through a screen that's blocked off, trying to take it. Liam Lloyd, number 20. Down low, Goggin. Centers it in front and not able to tee it up with Lloyd. Lloyd's got it again and swings it across out of the reach of Goggin. That almost got interesting. Check put on. Here goes uh, Goggin again. Now Lloyd back for Goggin. Couldn't get it to him. And the physicality just continues. Neither side backing down from it. Nope. Give no quarter. Here's a shot. That's knocked off. Rebound in the slot. Then cleared away and back into the Mendham zone. Half a minute to go in this highly intense first period. one nothing. Mendham leads. Here's Tambuala's shot that goes wide. Far boards. Gathering it. Marshutes. Puts down low. Tambuala got wiped out in front on a check by Gavin Barua. This is spun off the boards. A bouncing puck comes out. Opportunity with eight to go. Moving in. Shot save made. Nick Thomas with the opportunity, but getting down low was Tambuala, and that's how the first period ends. Shots in the first period. 11 for the Minutemen, six for the Gales. Nobody had a power play opportunity. And so everybody will get a 15 minute breather. We go to intermission, one nothing in favor of, of Mendham here on Morris Sussex Sports. No matter how hard I worked, there was just this little bit of area of fat that I just wasn't happy with. My lower back around my tummy. Just places that no amount of exercise or diet were gonna change. Couldn't do it on my own and the cool sculpting procedure got me what I was looking for. Cool sculpting is a patented cooling technology that targets and kills fat cells with no surgery or downtime. Your clinician will work with you to develop a treatment plan personalized to your specific fat reduction goals. Each treatment lasts as little as 35 minutes. During treatment, your cool sculpting clinician will first attach the applicator. This non-invasive procedure freezes the fat away without harming the skin. After treatment, you can immediately return to your normal daily activities. The results from cool sculpting are undeniable, but now Dr. Nussbaum and his team are taking it a step further by offering custom medical weight loss with cool sculpting. The MyCool Diet program is the first of its kind. By pairing doctor-supervised weight loss with cool sculpting technology, patients will lose the weight fast and keep it off even longer. Now's the time to see a slimmer you. Take the first step and get your cool sculpting consultation today. They were really great about catering to me and specializing in diet that was fit for my body and my needs. When you come see Dr. Nesbaum, you have his whole team here to help you, whether it be cool sculpting, the balloon, the surgery, no matter what it is, they won't stop helping you until you reach your goals. It was the best decision I've ever made. I lost almost 80 pounds. I'm just a happier overall person. Sports medicine is the care of athletes, college athletes, professional athletes, amateur athletes, and we see a lot of weekend warriors. At the Sports Medicine Center, we're up to date on all the latest techniques, both surgical and non-surgical treatment options for treating all sorts of injuries. It's important to make the diagnosis, make it quickly, and start the ball rolling with the treatment. If you can get an MRI done the same day of your injury, a lot of times that's gonna help 
get that treatment started in the right direction instead of waiting two, three weeks. I think reassurance, making the diagnosis and coming up with a good plan for that particular athlete is a very good thing. It helps to get the folks back on track and limits how discouraged they can actually be from the injury. Patient education is important. We want the patient to be part of the treatment plan and having the patient have an understanding of what their injury is, what their treatment options are, that helps them to get back to the sport that they love. We have doctors with all different uh, specialties within sports medicine, state-of-the-art concussion care, regenerative medicine, and then of course we have our orthopedic surgeons. If something needs to be fixed, uh, we can fix it, more than likely in a minimally invasive uh, fashion. With the arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures, we're able to do much of this surgery inside the joint without having to damage any of the surrounding tissue. It allows an athlete to return to sports much quicker. We're seeing excellent results with regenerative medicine. Ligament injuries that would normally have taken six to eight weeks, now we're seeing two to three week recovery periods. It gives me great pleasure to be able to treat an athlete and see them succeed back on the field. is over. Your connection is here. In areas all over Sussex County, Planet Network's fiber is now a reality. In Sparta, Newton, Hampton, Lafayette, Andover, Byram, and Franklin, we've begun installing high-speed fiber in these towns, and it's changing everything. Much faster, more reliable, and less expensive than your current plan. Don't settle for slow. Planet Network's fiber is up to 300 times faster than your cable company and up to 500 times faster than your phone company for less money. If you see one of these flyers on your door, your home is ready to be connected. If you want Planet Networks to build in your neighborhood, visit GetPlanetFiber.com and let us know. We'll build where the demand is greatest. It's a new day in Sussex County, and the internet will never be the same. Get connected at GetPlanetFiber.com. That's GetPlanetFiber.com. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. Rich Latman, realtor with Keeneland Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com. So it's been four years since I got the Neograft hair transplant procedure done, and I look and feel good when I look in the mirror. Guys, I know there's a lot of cures out there for hair loss, but the best solution is to ask your doctor about the Neograft hair transplant. There's no linear scar, little to no downtime, and it's your own hair going back on your head, and that is amazing. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Nussbaum. If you're struggling with thinning hair or hair loss, we can help you. Visit us at MyFullHair.com. That's MyFullHair.com. Semino & Philippone is a New Jersey-based law firm with offices in Morristown and Hazlitt, devoted to providing quality legal representation and personal attention in the areas of residential and commercial real estate, estate planning, and personal injury. Contact Joe Philippone at 732-203-0060 or by email at jphilippone at cf-lawfirm.com.
I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. At IV Rehab, we're here for you after your surgery. We're here when you're in a rush. When you're in pain. When you're aching. When you don't have a prescription. We're here to get to the root cause of your pain instead of just masking your symptoms. We're here. We are here. We're over there too. We're all over. So come to IV Rehab first. We'll be here for you. Deloja Cohen LLC is a law firm located in Chester, New Jersey. Although we are local, we provide legal services to businesses, entrepreneurs, governmental entities, and school boards statewide. We provide big firm quality work, but do so with a small firm feel and flexible pricing structure. Our specialties include employment law, labor relations, and commercial litigation. At Deloja Cohen, we are proud to support the local athletes in our community. Growing up, Brian Riley absolutely loved sports and competition. He remembers his dad telling him that if he wanted to be better, he need to practice more and work harder. So in high school, when he heard the Vince Lombardi quote, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. It truly resonated with him and that work ethic has translated into serving his clients better than many in the financial field. While Brian's industry experience and credentials are vast, he's quick to tell his clients, the fact that there are a bunch of letters behind my name doesn't mean that I'm smarter than anyone else. It simply means that I've been willing to take the time to invest in myself so that I could better serve them. And for me, being of service to others is the single most important thing in my life today. Getting the opportunity to work closely with families and businesses with complex needs, helping them to define their long-term goals, and providing them with meaningful solutions is a thrill for Brian. It makes him feel like he's back on the athletic field again. For a free financial consultation, contact Brian Riley at bryley at financialguide.com or call him at 973-738-4248. The Nussbaum Weight Loss Center is actually designed to help patients whether they have five pounds to lose or 500 pounds to lose. They're very helpful with um, explaining everything. You feel very comfortable. They walk you through everything. I am now the person I always knew I was inside. I lost about 100 pounds. Altogether, I've lost 80 pounds. I lost about 100 pounds. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nussbaum, for giving me my life back. I'm Dr. Michael Nussbaum. If you're struggling to lose weight, call us at the Nussbaum Weight Loss Centers. Your future, it's on. Goals are on. Learning is on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Online. On point. On your terms. Over 80 majors. Major help. Like career guidance. Number one in alumni salaries in New Jersey. Success. It's on. With CCM, the County College of Morris. Sign up now for summer and fall semesters.
Stephanie Ramirez. I'm 28 years old. I struggled with weight my whole life. I had the gastric sleeve done. I lost a total of 100 pounds. I'm actually healthier. No more diabetes, no more hypertensive. I would definitely recommend Dr. Nesbaum. Your weight may not be your fault. It could be a metabolic or hormonal problem. To learn more, come in for a free seminar. Go to NussbaumMedicalCenters.com or call 973-998-9833 to schedule a consultation today. No matter how hard I worked, there was just this little bit of area of fat that I just wasn't happy with. My lower back, around my tummy, just places that no amount of exercise or diet were going to change. Couldn't do it on my own, and the cool sculpting procedure got me what I was looking for. Cool sculpting is a patented cooling technology that targets and kills fat cells with no surgery or downtime. Your clinician will work with you to develop a treatment plan personalized to your specific fat reduction goals. Hi guys, welcome back here to Men in Arena. Brett Luther, Sean Bretherick, guys and gals I should say. One nothing in favor of the Minutemen as we go to the second period of play. And Sean, what did you see in that first period from your vantage point? Physicality, aggression, um, and a lot of it really happened in the Roxbury zone. Only one goal got scored in that, but Roxbury um, probably should be, probably would have taken that going into the locker room. Uh, the physical game, I expect it to stay exactly the same, constant, but uh, Roxbury does need to try to turn that physicality on their end into offense the other way, uh, plain and simple. And if they're not able to do that, then Mendham is gonna, just, is gonna continue to control the puck, have that possession, and uh, you know, when you win the possession and you already got up by one, it's hard to come back in games when you don't have the puck, in other words. Second period about to get started once Paul Crosta drops the puck in, which he does right there, and we are underway. Oh. And quickly, it's out of play. <laughs> Heads up. And I'll try that again. As you were. Yep, as you were. Puck up the boards towards center ice and then spun right back in. Oh! Another hard hit. Two guys went down that time. And it's Ian Tambawala that was dishing out the punishment there. I, I tell you what, during the first uh, 15 minutes and 30 seconds, <laughs> Tambawala's had himself a really good game. Yeah. Oh boy. In front, shot same. Eight. Callahan rebound sits loose and then goes to the corner. In the meantime, in the blue paint that time was Gavin Marshutes. There's a turnaround by Tambawala, blocked another one, save, and another save by Callahan. Shot thrown through is blocked off. Marshutes goes for the shove. Out the other way is Kyle Jenkins to the blue line, but not out. Lest you think, oh wow, it's just everybody looking to finish their checks, some in a more emphatic fashion than others. Nice play. Turned over and neutralized, but not able to get forward that time was Nick Thomas. And then he finishes his check. Now a two on two that's gonna be offside and we'll get a neutral zone face off. Minute 33 into the second. And we're seeing more or less of the same again. The, uh, that four check from Mendham is playing fits with this uh, Roxbury team in their own zone again. Physicality or not, they got to be able to break the. They got to be able to break out. True. This one spun in, but this again is when Mendham plays their. Their style, they're playing their game. It makes it very difficult for an opposition player, an opposition team to break out against them. Because they do put this high line of pressure on. It's gonna spin around the boards. Oh. Griffin Josevec trying to win it. Said to the far side and out to center. Now foot races on. 
That's a pretty good player to have back there, Matt Goggin, to stabilize things. And he puts the hit on Jake Kalani as it was dumped in his way. Spin around, Kalani trying to break free, but couldn't. Another hit put on. I mean, both teams have got to be well into the double digits in hits right now in this game. That puck is kept in, if only for a moment. Oh, man. And a shot save made. Rebound saved again. Two saves that time by Callahan. And the Roxbury faithful getting a little restless right now. Puck moved up and out to center ice, quickly slung right back in by Kyle Vongas on his senior night. Now on the sec in this second period, this long ship period, this exact forecheck is going, if this continues this way, this game is going to get out of hand. I know Callahan's a good goaltender, but the chances that Mendham has been getting, you can only trust, you can only hope a goaltender of the caliber of him is going to be able to make some of them, not all of them. I got to figure out which one that is first. <laughs> Got to find. I got. I got to. Yeah. I just got to. I just got to find out which player that is in that in that uh, picture. And then, because I don't want to say the wrong guy. <laughs> it is seniors. It is the senior spotlight here tonight for for Mendham. Slung out in front. That's broken up. Battle for the rebound. Worked loose and then tied up again along the boards. Out to the blue line, not out of the zone. Spun around once more. He'll go to the far corner then far side. Chopped at by Kyle Vongas. Fed out for a shot by Brandon Wienerman. It goes up and out of, uh, out of play, getting a stoppage. 324 into this second period. And so now, which one are we at? Go ahead, Sean. With the, uh, the, way that, the way that this has been going, you got to look into the the physicality that Mendham is, have, is doing, putting these pucks in areas where you expect to get checked, and, you know, Roxbury just trying to get it, try to get out of those situations, rather than trying to, rather than taking the battle, which is why Mendham is seemingly getting in those areas easier without much uh, contention. Tie up along the boards and in the corner. Now worked up the, towards the blue line. And now Brian Westergaard gets it out. And here comes a rush the other way. Kuyenga's shot and a save made by Tambawala. Rebound behind the net. Gathered a far side pass is broken up and back in deep it goes. Retrieving the puck, Grant McClung, number 24. Near side boards, one and two, out to center. And away in the other direction now, Blake Stevens steps in and takes a shot that's high and wide. Rebound bounces around in front before Jenkins comes away. Kyle Jenkins, a pass on to the right wing side. Ahead goes the number 18 of Nick Thomas. Around the net with this is Nick Thomas. Puts out to the blue line. A wrist shot from there that goes wide from Gavin Barua. Out to center now, Mendham in the other direction. That's Neutral zone dump in by Blake Stevens gets a line change going. First one in after the puck. And trying to win it free is Liam Lloyd. Couldn't quite do so. Now a loose puck to center ice. Gathered and slung right back in. In the corner, centering feed in front, but it was in the skates of Josevic. Behind the net. A centering feed again for Josevic, and again it was in his skates. Bouncing buck is going to be collected, and we get a stoppage of play. And we get ourselves a selfie. Oh, well, not really a selfie. It's a senior spotlight. Nice. For Cameron Wheel, number 26. Back then a 99 on a Wolfpack team. Well, on that West Mars Mendham, uh, he played for the uh, Mendham team of our as a freshman. Interesting fact about Cam, he's got a twin sister and they've been adding to a sibling handshake for over five years. One side shot, save made, rebound behind the net. Everything just has a little extra verve to it. Turn around, shot, Tambuala oh. gloves and holds on. Interesting approach for Tambuala with the save there, but Still snagged it. Exactly. He's off to come. 
Tie up, controlled, and put across. Center ice chopped at a couple of times back into the zone. Another hit put on, and then this sent in. Joe Eibel, number three, mm. trying to put out front, couldn't do so. Still Roxbury Puck trying to win it back and not able to do so. It was Sean Hardy. This goes all the way down for an icing with 9.05 to go in this second period. We'll try to get another senior spotlight picture going soon. Oh, there's one up on the screen right now. Uh, this shot score! We couldn't get the putt. We could not get the picture off in time. Everything's stuck right now in our production, and now it's finally gone. The game's tied at one. That was Jenkins who was able to put a shot through some traffic, and Roxbury needed that in the worst way. Putting it through a screen. Tambowella had no chance of seeing that puck. And we're tied at one again. This puck dumped in and around. Far corner. We're sorry. We, uh, there's a break opportunity coming in. Shot saved. Tambowella score on the rebound. Stephen King after Tantillo was stopped. Two quick goals in the span of 21 seconds. It's now 2-1. And there's that flourish that Roxbury getting a shot in there, coming from the captain, Kyle Jenkins. That whole bench started standing up. And sure enough, the rush back the other way, getting a couple men through. And sure enough, one shot and then another following it up. Roxbury just like that now has the lead. And now Roxbury coming forward again. Two goals in 21 seconds has turned the game around. Long opportunity not to side. We're gonna have to measure what, ha what this game from before and after that that picture came up on the screen? <laughs> well, the picture blocked out the first goal, and Jordan was trying to get it off as fast as he could. It just, it, it, sometimes that happens. We had a lot of those problems last night. This goes all the way down, no ice. And Roxbury goal, scored by number 22, Kyle Jenkins. An assist from number 18. Time of the goal, six minutes into the second period. That's Jenkins from Keene. Six so Keen got the Roxbury assist on the first goal. By number eight, Stephen Keen. With assist from number 10, Tantillo. And number six, Rudenberg. They hear in the background. Of the second period. Jenkins That's from Keen. That's Rudenberg six minutes. And then Keen from Tantillo and Rudenberg at 621. And when everything settles down, we'll get that next one going on. Mm. I think it's going to be the one that accidentally popped on the screen before. There's a shot that's blocked off. And now a skate out the other way. On side. Trying to dangle through was Thomas, but he had it cut off. Still Roxbury fights for a penalty call coming. It's going to be against McClung. Power play coming for Roxbury. Well, McClung did a good job on the back check there, but then just a little bit too much after that. And now Roxbury... The momentum needle is all the way on the side of the Gales right now. The first power play of the game, too. It is. <laughs> George's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> They're taking too long. <laughs> Face off to come in the zone. 7.32 to go in the second. 7.28 time of the penalty. McClung for a trip. Sends the Gales to their first power play and a bouncer that goes wide. And the rebound cleared up and all the way down. 
Now a turnaround up there. Gathered by Liam Lloyd. And he turns over and out go the Gales in the other direction. Right wing pass, trying to move it forward to Steven. Uh, check that, that is the 18 of Nick Thomas. Sent back down, 2-1 the score. 6.55 to go here in the second period. Peeling out is Thomas, takes a look, skates up ice. Nick Thomas going in, hounded a couple of times into the corner with Cameron Wheel. Put around the boards, backhanded along by Kalani. Uh, Kalani, I should say once more, fed back out to the blue line, a hurried shot by Jenkins, blocked wide. Rebound grabbed by Wheel, off the glass and up and all the way down. Callahan comes to play at 52 on the power play. Picking it up behind the net, Joe D. Domenico, number 25. Leaves it off. Jenkins puts on the brakes and they'll start their breakout once more. Pass on up ahead for the number 18 of Nick Thomas. He peels back and now starts up ice. Thomas and across the line, continues on. Nick Thomas checked on the play, spins out wow. of a hit. Still Thomas with the puck, feeds the blue line, D. Domenico. Wrist shot blocked off to the far side corner, slugged off the glass and all the way down. 13 on the man advantage. Pressure being put on by Ian Tambuala, but now trying to step out is Chase McGowan. Off the glass, and it's sent right back the other way. Line change on for the minute men as the power play ends. Roxbury 0 for 1 with the man advantage. They still have the 2 1 lead, though. 5.21 to go here in the second. A pass on up ice, another hit put on. We've heard this before. Cross ice now into the path of Randy De Palma. Heels back into his own end, puts a pass across that's not quite on target. So Joe Di Domenico tries up and he's blocked as well. Di Domenico gets the puck back, flips up and out of play. And now we can get to this next senior spotlight for Mendham. That fellow right there is Joe Pallas back when he was younger. Interesting fact about Joe, he's, he's he does something I can't do, drives a stick shift car. Now he's also worked as a hockey referee for the last three years, which is pretty good. So good job out of Joe. So we've seen Joe, we've seen Cameron. We'll see who comes up next, probably in the third period. Play it along. Now in the corner, gathering into Stephen Keen. He's got a goal and an assist tonight. Up the boards and out to center. Glad you can join us here on Morris Sussex Sports. Brett Luthner, Sean Bretherick on the camera in color. There's a shot that whistles wide. Jordan Catelli on the production side of things. 2 1 in favor of Roxbury. This puck kept in, trying to gather was. Aiken had to, by the way, he's finally back out there. He, along with uh, the number four of Sean Hardy after they had their little uh, run in the first period. Now a skate out ahead goes Stephen Keene. Oh. And a whistle's going to be blown off sides, going to be the call, getting a stoppage of play in the ire of, <laughs> of Stephen Keene. The stoppage comes with 3.51 to go here in the second period. And let's get another one up there while we're at it. And this young man happens to be Tim Tambuala. Wasn't in the goalie gear back then at Valley Forge. At age three, here's his interesting fact. He led the first ever toddler break out of his nursery school. Something tells me mom snuck that in there. Otherwise, other maybe Tim put it in there himself. But Tim, by the way, has been accepted into the Bachelor's in Engineering and Master's in Management Joint Degree Program at Trinity College, not in Hartford, but in Dublin, Ireland. Hey. Yeah. Obviously, you know, there's one left coming up. Jordan's going to make sure I'm well aware of who's going to be the next one up. There we go. 
<laughs> oh, what was that? Uh, nothing called, that's what. Uh, miscommunication there by the uh, Roxbury players, nearly yeah. causing a big chance. Now listen, no, no harm, no foul, but a penalty call's coming up. It's gonna be against Tambuala. Delayed call, a hooking call is gonna be made. That was um, pretty plain to see, unfortunately. Back to the power player, Roxbury, with 3.06 to go here in the second. Face off to come deep in the Mendham zone. They're checking something on the left side. Oh, they're good. Wasn't too sure about the, wet, the uh, goal to our left, apparently. Just making sure everything's copacetic, I guess you could say. Face off controlled, cross ice pass gathered by Jenkins. Now behind the net with it is Kuyenga. Eventually fed cross ice to Jenkins. Jenkins throws towards goal, scored through a screen. Not sure if it was tipped in front, but Jenkins snapped it home. It's 3 1 Roxbury. Taking advantage of the power play there. Another good setup, very similar to the first goal that they scored, Brett. Look at that traffic setup. Two, three, two, three. Straight on all the way to the netminder. And somebody had flashed out in front that might have gotten a tip on it. But otherwise, that's gonna be a Jenkins goal at 12-14. A power play goal that stretches the lead. And a whistle and a stoppage of play. Gives us a chance to tell you. Hunting and Learning Center of Morristown still time to get ready for finals that'll be coming up soon. No better time to contact us at Learning Center of Morristown than now. Call 973-292-9265 to learn more about how our certified teachers can help your students today. Another penalty call. Oh, Bench never mind. Minor, Bench minor for unsportsmanlike. The good old magic words. Yep. What? That was impressive. Kyle Jenkins must play must play soccer on the uh, during the offseason. Or the footwork drills that a lot of hockey players like to do. This is true. Fed back out. Around the boards to the blue line, but not out. Keep by Jenkins momentarily. Second effort, gets out the center. Here's a two on one. And a save, Rebo, what a save! What? Watch this again. I, I, I don't know. So, somehow the stick, how do I stop that? It did. By the way, it was tipped out in front. Kuyenga gets the goal, assisted by Jenkins on the power play at 12-14. Oh, boy. There's a shot. Pan save made, and a good one at that by Callahan. Now Roxbury will... Try to start things out. That's turned over, and here go the Minutemen once more. Aikenhead trying to dip through. Hits a sharp angle shot that goes off the throat protector of Callahan. And now down low. This chip up and now into the zone. Coming back for this, the number 14, Jake Kalani. Leaves on off the skate on up by Kyle Jenkins. Jenkins gains the red, starts to move across the blue on side. That shot wide of the mark. Rebound, far side corner. Turnaround shot, just waffle boarded aside by Kuyenga. I uh, checked it, Kuyenga, what am I saying? That's Tembuala. And then this is going to be sent all the way down and played with a high stick. 106 to go in this second period. Gives us a chance to tell you that Phalanx Krav Maga and CrossFit 
in Wharton are coaches who live and breathe what they teach. They love what they do. They are not cheerleaders and they are not spectators. They are instructors with a simple mission to get you results. DM Phalanx or contact them at phalanxkmcf.com to claim a free week of unlimited training. Off the draw, picked up behind. Now the wind up. Center ice and the skate in here by Nick Thomas. Shot score! A bullet might have been deflected on the way in. Thomas scores on the power play. It's 4-1 Gales. Well, we're gonna see where this shot comes from. And that ball, and that puck just beats him. Straight from the point. Thomas getting the goal regardless. Might have been tipped off a defenseman stick on the way, but that was a bullet. Now ran my camera. <laughs> yeah. On his aching head. This shot goes wide. It's just been a sudden second period explosion here by Roxbury. Roxbury goal, the power play goal. Thomas. Oh, Thomas scores oh. the goal. Oh. There's a move on out by Kalani after all that down low. Penalty call coming. It's going to be against Mendham. Delayed call against Mendham. 15 to go in the period. Long pass is going to miss the mark. There's the touch. And another penalty. And back into the box goes Aikenhead. I think we're about to have ourselves two here, I believe. Unless if he's just trying to, nope, he just gave him the puck back. And trying to plead the cases, Liam Lloyd. Yeah, he's going in too, I think. Yeah. I think he got one for a cross check and another one for either a hold or some obstruction penalty. There was definitely some type of a grab that was done on the far blue line when Roxbury was trying to break it back out the other way. Well, I heard two for roughing on Aikenhead. I'm seeing two for, uh, right now it's two up on the board for cross-checking. That was the signal given, and that's to Liam Lloyd. Uh, this is definitely not going to make that Mendham bench too happy. Well, I think the penalty. I think the second penalty came right at the end. We saw right before the possession was taken by mm. by Mendham. You saw somebody tugging on that jer tugging on a jersey uh, right as they were breaking out. So the second penalty was the cross check. The first one was the roughing call that was going to get made. As far as I know, maybe maybe it's the other way around. But either way. Mendham penalty. Oh, shot the same mate. Yep, that's the first one. So Aikenhead got the second penalty for roughing and another penalty coming. That's two minutes for cross checking and two minutes for roughing. And now a slashing call is going to make it four on three as Jake Kalani heads to the box. Time of this penalty 14.57. They'll have a five-minute break between periods to everybody, for everybody to cool off, but you're starting to see a lot of emotions get frayed in this one. Yeah. Again, remember, you can only go so far to try to take your frustrations out on the ice here at this level. So things could get, things could get nasty real quick. That oh, shot boy. whistles wide after the buzzer. Well, we'll see and here. there's going to be a little bit of a conversation going on. And nothing more. Roxbury penalty to the think. for slashing to number 14, Kalani. Time of the penalty, 1457 of the second period. Well, that ends the second. Let's take a timeout. 4-1. Roxbury after two here on Mars Sussex Sports.
they were really great about catering to me and specializing a diet that was fit for my body and my needs. When you come see Dr. Nesbaum, you have his whole team here to help you, whether it be cool sculpting, the balloon, the surgery, no matter what it is, they won't stop helping you until you reach your goals. It was the best decision I've ever made. I lost almost 80 pounds. I'm just a happier overall person. Sports medicine is the care of athletes, college athletes, professional athletes, amateur athletes, and we see a lot of weekend warriors. At the Sports Medicine Center, we're up to date on all the latest techniques, both surgical and non-surgical treatment options for treating all sorts of injuries. It's important to make the diagnosis, make it quickly, and start the ball rolling with the treatment. If you can get an MRI done the same day of your injury, a lot of times that's going to help get that treatment started in the right direction instead of waiting two, three weeks. I think reassurance, making the diagnosis and coming up with a good plan for that particular athlete is a very good thing. It helps to get the folks back on track and limits how discouraged they can actually be from the injury. Patient education is important. We want the patient to be part of the treatment plan and having the patient have an understanding of what their injury is, what their treatment options are, that helps them to get back to the sport that they love. We have doctors with all different uh, specialties within sports medicine, state-of-the-art concussion care, regenerative medicine, and then of course we have our orthopedic surgeons. If something needs to be fixed, uh, we can fix it, more than likely in a minimally invasive uh, fashion. With the arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures, we're able to do much of this surgery inside the joint without having to damage any of the surrounding tissue. It allows an athlete to return to sports much quicker. We're seeing an excellent result with regenerative medicine. Ligament injuries that would normally have taken six to eight weeks, now we're seeing two to three week recovery periods. It gives me great pleasure to be able to treat an athlete and see them succeed back on the field. over. Your connection is here. In areas all over Sussex County, Planet Network's fiber is now a reality. In Sparta, Newton, Hampton, Lafayette, Andover, Byram, and Franklin, we've begun installing high-speed fiber in these towns, and it's changing everything. Much faster, more reliable, and less expensive than your current plan. Don't settle for slow. Planet Network's fiber is up to 300 times faster than your cable company and up to 500 times faster than your phone company for less money. If you see one of these flyers on your door, your home is ready to be connected. If you want Planet Networks to build in your neighborhood, visit GetPlanetFiber.com and let us know. They put the 15 up a little bit earlier than we expected. Third period get ready to start. But before we do that, Senior Spotlight one more time tonight. We should sponsor these Senior Spotlights, by the way. That'd be a good idea. All right. Next game, we'll see if we can do that. At George Wu, if you're watching, got an idea for you. So we'll get to that Senior Spotlight in a moment. Third period is underway. And it got started a little bit earlier than I think all of us expected. Bretherick was the first one ready to go. I have stopped laughing from our little joke that we were having a moment ago. And the more you talk about it, the more laughs you might bring back. <laughs> well, I think a lot of these, I think, I think in, all, in all seriousness, Brett, I think these referees, yeah. I think they wanted to get this started back up again because, I mean, you've got these, ki you've got these kids we're sitting basically right next to each other. Score! What a shot. Joe D. Domenico, it's 5-1 Roxbury. Well, my apologies on that one, Brett, but Joe D. Domenico's done it again. This kid yeah. is the heart and soul of this Roxbury uh, Gales team. And, you know, I think just to finish the thought, I think the referees just wanted to get this thing going quicker based on the fact that, you know, these two teams were sitting full on the bench. 
next to each other. It's just it's, it's only the pot is only going to get stirred a little bit more. You got to get him out there and get him focused, and that's what happened, I think. Mm. That's a power play goal for Roxbury. It's their third power play goal in a row. Bouncing puck. Now we play four on four for a minute. And then it'll be an ever so short power play of eight seconds. This is in. Shot save made off the mask of Tambuala. I see. I keep on seeing these shots go off masks as Tambuala reaches behind the cover. And I keep on thinking back. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. Because um, it's... Yeah, well, no, I, it, I'm, I'm stuttered. Don't mind me. All right, selfie. Senior spotlight. Nice-looking hey. jersey, too. Sort of like a Quebec jersey. But that there, Kyle Vongas. He is a certified EMT for Mendenboro. Nice. He's enrolled at CCM to get his associate's degree in business management, and he's going to transfer to a four-year school for his bachelor's. Joe Domenico, with assist from number 22, Jenkins. 36 seconds in, so. It's interesting to see about some of these guys. Vongas is playing all over the place. Roxbury Youth and New Jersey Freeze, New Jersey Renegades. Of course, with the men to Minutemen here. Unfortunately for Kyle and company, they're on the wrong end of an outburst yeah. by Roxbury tonight. This has been, this has been Roxbury to a T, basically, their last several games, though. There's a wrist shot blocked off. And again, in all likelihood, these two teams will uh. probably meet in the uh, semifinals. Oh. Barring mishaps. Here's an opportunity in front. That blasted off of the leg. Turnaround shot wide. Rebound. Side of the net gathered by Woodenberg. He'll clear up and out to center. That'll just mean Roxbury's going to have home ice in it. Here's a turn. That's a shot and a save made again by Callahan off the stick of Michael Gianco. This comes up and out to center ice, the skate ahead. The intensity has not stopped though, which no. give credit to all the players for it. They're still putting every last bit of effort, sweat equity, if you will, into this contest. Buck rimmed around the boards now with 12-13 to go in the third period. Tie up, shot goes wide, a rebound. Near side, and that's turned aside by Callahan. This will come up and out to center. And now back in come the Minutemen. There's a shot and a save me. I don't even think Callahan saw that no, off the stick of Matt Goggin. I don't think he did. Goggin in front trying to center. It's a battle. Here comes Tampa Wallens blocked up high. A whistle's going to be blown. An elbowing call to be made. Gives us a chance to tell you about Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton. It's a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, and veal, and many store-made opportunity or specialty items, I should say. Visit SussexMeat.com. Into the penalty box, Chase McGowan for an elbow at 3.25. And the first full power play now, we think, for Mendham. Officially 0 for 1, that first opportunity all of 8 seconds. Aikenhead, shot and a save made. Rebound, it's Aikenhead again. Turns and shoots and he misses Callahan's cage. Near sideboard, Goggin puts down into the corner, waits for the return pass that never comes because peeling away with it is Josevic. Takes a look, shimmies, and then along the boards. Centers out in front. That's blocked off and sent all the way down. Tambuala won't play the puck. He'll just let his players come back for it. Steve Dangle would appreciate yeah, that. Ah, yes. Turned over almost. Goggin goes back and gets the puck and skates up ice. Mac Goggin ahead. Still it's Goggin. Look, centers in front. Ruts broken up by Jenkins, who goes off the boards and out to center. I think it's one of the more solid defenders we yeah. I've seen in yeah. this league. Yeah, that's a good point. He blocks shots. 
We know he can do that. He's a bigger body. He's Here. a good player. Here's Goggin shooting score! What a shot. What an absolute snipe by Goggin off the far post and in. A power play goal makes it 5-2. This, this is a tip your cap moment. Matt Goggin plays this puck right on the right circle and absolutely picks his spot and absolutely rips one and nails his spot right on uh, that, the money. <laughs> that is just... That's a goal scorer's goal right yes. there. And if you're and if you're Roxbury, you just tip your cap on that one. That's a good shot. It's a good goal. Back to five on five. And Mendham still down three though. Needs some work to do. Yep. But we've seen their four check work in this game earlier. Now it's all about trying to reestablish that and getting that pressure. But it's seeming like almost perfect shots have been the only thing that's been beaten Callahan. Goal, power play goal. Still, oh, that's a hit. Man. With assists from number 24, McClung. Number 11, Aikenhead. As you hear in the background, McClung and Aikenhead on the assists. That's nearly turned over. Instead, it goes the other way. So, 5-2 now. The most dangerous lead in hockey is right now at three goals. Although it becomes less dangerous as time ticks on. In this case, nine and a half and counting, third period. Back for the puck now is Kyle Jenkins. Takes a look, snaps a pass on a bike, nearly picked off by Goggin. Instead, the other way for the dump in is Kalani. He's checked on the play by Cameron Wheel. Around the boards and out to center ice. Backhanded into the zone once more. So once again, the Minutemen start up. Puck doesn't get too terribly far, though, and then helping it out, wheel some more. Sent further by Marshutes. Time the enemy of Mendham at the moment. This puck chipped up, but not out of his own. The keep by Stevens. Centered in front, same made score on the rebound! And it might have been Tambuwala again. And it's 5-3. That puck just squeaked by Callahan, that one. I think you, I think if you're I think if you're Roxbury, that's a surprise that's a shocker right there. Uh, might not have been might have actually been uh Gavin Marshutes. Strange goal for sure. Oh, don't go anywhere just yet, folks. There's still some game to be had. Oh, and a massive collision on that play. Liam Lloyd colliding with Joe T. Domenico, who received the worst of that deal. And much like every other every other player on Roxbury, they get right back up. Played off ice to center. Mendham goal scored by number 12, Kevin Marshutes. Marshutes gets with it. Number, four, oh, oh, it and number two, Goggin. Quickly, Matt Goggins got a goal and an assist. Blake Stevens had an assist on that play as well. Here's D. Domenico. He tried to center in front, couldn't do so. Bumped on the play again. Now comes to the near side. D. Domenico went in for the hit, but reading it all the way was Goggin. Turned around in front. That's deflected. And away goes Aikenhead. Tristan Aikenhead. He's going to have a step. Aikenhead in. Save made. Kind of bobbled a little bit at the end, and Callahan was able to get the left pad out. Slugged around the boards to the blue line where it's kept in by Goggin. Goggin shoots. That's deflected to the near corner. Turnaround shot save. Score on the rebound. And there's a scramble in front afterwards, skating out of there quickly, and then letting the bazooka go is Aikenhead. It's 5-4. <laughs> Well, that's an interesting one. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen a celly like that before. Getting the rebounds now. It's cr now it's now you see Menem crashing the net now though. That's the last two goals have exact have been exactly that, crashing the net, making it difficult for Callahan to be able to stop a secondary shot, making him have to be perfect and having to stop the initial one. 
And then now we're having a discussion between the officials. They uh, they're trying they're going to try to dish out penalties one each side here. Uh, Paul Crosta addressed both benches and and was saying something. So now or, we'll see what's up. Wait. Okay. So the goal is going to count. Yeah, I would assume it's going to be a good goal, yeah. And then there's going to be roughing calls I'm seeing afterwards. You're hearing the beeps of the scoreboard in the background, so we'll see what happens here. It looks like the penalty is going to actually go against Callahan. Wow. I, I didn't see anything, but there was a pile in front. And Amanda definitely – well, that's what, that's what happens a lot of – that's what happens sometimes when you've – Basically adjusted your uh, your attack, not only to aggressively forecheck, which was working for a good portion of this game. Now you're also crashing the net two, three guys at a time, because Callahan is stopping those initial shots, and then he's getting a whole bunch of room uh, to get those secondary shots. And now Mendham has taken them away, and you've seen a complete change in this game. It's now, this is now going to also test the mental fortitude of Ryan Callahan because right, when, I can tell you this as a, as a card carrying member of the goal, Goaltenders Society, if you will. When you get a penalty called on you after you've given up a goal or two for when you think you've been aggrieved, oh, it, it, it's something that definitely tests your patience, if you will. And the goal scored by number 11, Tristan Aikenberg. Oh, my. Jeez. Well, the, Sean's reaction says it all. Jo Joe DiDomenico got hit and went flying into the corner boards. Interference is going to be the call. I think this probably should only be a two, though. I think the problem was is that the hit was sought by from somebody of the size of Will Lloyd against somebody the size of Joe DiDomenico. I think that's what that was what escalated the hit, and D, and D Domenico, of course, as always, as he always seems to, gets right back up, and he's actually going to be out on the ice right now because that's just what Joe D Domenico does. Right. He, he. So the penalty to Liam Lloyd for interference. In the meantime, Sean Cato is serving, I'm sorry, uh, Tristan Tantillo is serving Callahan's penalty. No, you had it right the first time. No, no, Cato is on uh, Mendham. Ah, yes, well, it was 14, yes. Third period, that's two minutes for interference. Well, we're four on four for another minute 11. This one sent into the zone, going back for this puck. Am I reading that number right? What? It is, oh, it's 12. Okay, I, I, I couldn't make out the number for a second because his jersey was tucked in. Save Callahan, but that was Marshoots. We get a stoppage of play. Now, I have an opportunity to tell you this. Well, not yet. Give me a moment. I'll get there. I'll do it after this. the face off. Oh, yeah, we'll have the X Hockey Products Pro Shop and DiscountHockey.com three stars in a game following this contest. Plenty of candidates for consideration. Onside skate now for Kuyenga, and he lost the puck. Away goes Aikenhead the other way in a two-on-two. -two. Aikenhead shooting, save made, and held on to. We haven't had any selfies tonight, have we? I haven't, seen, I haven't even had a chance to announce it tonight. Uh, by the way, the law offices of Mark A. Blount LLC is a law firm that focuses on litigation, labor, land use, construction litigation, and real estate and business transactions. Contact Mark today at mblount at bluntlawoffice.com. Face-off controlled towards the blue line, but not out of the zone. Backhand pass, shot attempt that time was fanned on by Aikenhead. Back behind the net, now into the corner. 
collecting it, trying to move in Giancho. He's met with resistance from the in the form of Kyle Jenkins, I should say. Penalty call coming up. Jenkins arguing his case. They needed to touch the puck. They'll eventually touch it there. And then some chirping going on afterwards. Just as the one penalty ended, slashing call. And now, oh, may heard in the background. Each bench has gotten an unsportsmanlike. Well, <laughs> it's it's been heated. And here's the thing. I, I don't really see anything wrong with what's been called tonight. No. Well you're trying to you're trying to maintain maintain the order. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Crust is one of the Crust is one of the the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Experience. One of well he's experienced, he's also one of the you know he is no it, nonsense kind of attitude out yeah, there when he But when he, it, it still situation. takes a lot for him to tag you like that. So Let's something go. really has to be said. Go. In the meantime, cross size pass. And that's gonna be turned over. Here goes a breakaway. Moving in Thomas. Save made. Nick Thomas had the break opportunity. And that one is stopped. Here's a look. We're gonna watch this actually. Just a blocker there. Let's go, Russ. This has just been intense from the get-go, and the intensity has built as the game has gone on. And now you're seeing, again, Paul Cross is just saying, hey, guys, let's knock it off. Playing the last 5-15. That's pretty much the message he's trying to tell them. Whether or not the message Rose gets through is another thing. Two minute for slashing, number 22, Jenkins. I don't know if he thought he was going to be in this situation, but I'm kind of glad that he is because he's one of the better ones to take handle yep. stuff like this. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He's been – we, we've seen him over yes. the course of many years call all different sorts of levels, uh, including, including the collegiate game. So, tell you what, the NI – the NI HOA officials – have been splendid all the way through. That's a screenshot that never, we've never seen. But all the officials has been wonderful that we've seen. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen any bad ones. Here's a shot. Score! And the bazooka's out again for Aikenhead. We're tied at five. Just like that, you're getting the two-man advantage. You get that to go, and now... Get a face off at center ice. Hopefully, it won't be anything after the fact this time. Well, the, the lessons are learned there, and I believe that's exactly the case. Aikenhead has got two goals and an assist in his four goal outburst here in the third period. Although, I think Nick Thomas may have just been tossed out of the game, though, because he is now sitting outside the rink on to our right. Yeah, I did see that. There's a one time and score! <laughs> Liam Lloyd, 6 5, Mendham. Just like that. It's about the pressure. It was all about this four check. It was working to a perfection in the first portion of this game. Mendham was perfecting it. Roxbury was unable to break out and there was unable to break out in most cases. But Callahan was able to hold it for the for at the point. But now you add a couple extra bodies in front of him, he can't stop 
what he can't see. Oh, uh, I don't see Thomas anymore down there. No, he came back out. Yeah. I, I have no idea why he left. I guess he just, just got something looked at. I guess. There's a trainer down there, so. Uh. What a turnaround. Power play goal scored by number 20, William Lloyd. With an assist from number 11, Aikenhead. Two goals in 16 seconds. Up the boards and out to center. And what a turnaround this has been. This was a 5-1 Roxbury lead. And then the game got completely turned around on the air. That's covered up. By the way, the two teams that combined for six power play goals, three each. And it shows exactly that. The, the penalties that were called, the the discipline, the, you know, the lack of the composure. You get those penalties called the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. Both unsportsmanlike conduct penalties on the benches have resulted in goals, by the way. Right. That's the whole that's that's the whole point. Three for six on the power play is Roxbury. Three for five on the power play is Mendham. As this puck is tied up behind the net and then a stick goes flying in a stoppage of play with 3.12 to go in the third period. And a time, no, no timeout. And, and, the the and, and the crazy thing about it, really, it, it, it's, you, you, could, you would imagine a 5-1 comeback to go, well, go up 6-5 would be a little more shocking. Uh, to be brutally honest with you, you kind of kind of felt it brewing. Yeah. That's a block, and then this is to the blue line, but not out. But again, we, when we were saying it, when it was 5-1, you could see it's like nobody was stopping. Nobody was giving an inch still. The hustle was still there. It's like, well, they're not stopping playing. And then 5-2 and 5-3, and then the momentum shifted. The penalties came, and now it's 6-5. Mendham has scored their six, their five goals here in the third period in a span of six minutes and 10 seconds. As this goes all the way down for icing. Extremely hard to do. Yeah. I, it doesn't matter what level, um, unless you're playing in, in, a, in a Sunday night beer league where nobody plays defense, it's very hard to get five goals in six minutes and 10 seconds. It, you need the perfect storm of everything. And I'm actually surprised that Roxbury has not from within any of those goals at any point even now since now has not even called timeout during any of that I'm, I'm surprised neither coach has called timeout during the right. wave of goals but they haven't uh, peel out here's Lloyd feeds out in front Aiken head score it's a hat trick for Tristan Aiken head Three times the bazooka comes out. It's 7-5. RPG. Unbelievable. That comes in, oh, that comes a uh, minute 51 after the go-ahead goal moment uh, that yeah, uh, I'm speechless. This long and goes wide. The pressure has finally gotten, though. 39 shots have resulted in seven goals. And there's a save at the other end. That's turned over almost and is in the corner now. It's Thomas. Tried to feed out front, instead goes to the blue line. Collision there. Here's Aikenhead. Fifteen. Joseph Ek and oh, that's a whistle and a penalty call. Aikenhead drew that one. I mean, roughing the call. Yeah, pretty clear cut there. I mean, behind the play, um, but you, you, I mean, listen, that's 
uh, you know, you get the you get the frustration there. I mean, Aikenhead is the one that's been scoring all three, and uh, you're just trying to send a message, even though it's going to cause you a penalty. And now, Roxbury with a minute 40 down two. Have to got to get it going here if they want to try to get back into this game. But I just don't know. And this is sent back in. What a, this has been one of the more room and another penalty coming up and it's gonna be against yep. Mendham this time. Yeah, Tambuwala. Tambuwala. D Joe D Dominico is draw is draws is gonna draw this penalty again here. And I, I well, that's it. Check from behind there. Now I gotta be careful here with one one twenty three. One twenty three. Yeah. Is Callahan coming to the bench for this? This is staying four on four, barring other penalties. Mind you, that's a five, but right, it but it's matter. not gonna matter because both penalties are gonna stay up for the rest of the game unless there's another penalty here. Right. Gathering and sent in around the boards by McGowan. There's been a lot of penalties in this game. Only one in the first period, but that was a pair of checks from behind where you saw by the Zamboni door. And the physicality of this game intensified even more after that. There's another collision. That time McGowan put Joe Palace to the ice. Up and out, and it's a two-on-one if they hurry. Liam Lloyd shooting, and he missed the top corner and out of play. 52.7 seconds to go. Wow. Nothing more to say than wow in this game. A one nothing Minutemen lead after one, which you felt the intensity picking up, but then Roxbury scored four in the second, got the first goal in the third uh, to make it 5-1, but the last six have been scored by Mendham. Here's a wrist shot, score! The scoring's not done yet. Kyle Jenkins makes it seven to six. And you know, the crazy part is, is that the people that you're hearing, you're hearing on our crowd, on the crowd, Mike, they always keep saying to shoot it. Now, yeah, I get it, put the puck on that, some good things happen, but that was a, just a kind of a just shoot it mo situation. Yeah. And it, 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 it worked. Yeah. So. Crazy. That is just, it, it, this has been, I, I think, Sean, we could say this has been the wildest game we've had this year. It's been fairly wild, I would say, yes. <laughs> Seven to six with 39 seconds to go, but this game's not over yet. The, the, fact, that, the fact that now you have. Timeout Roxbury, by the way. Before you go on, Sean. It gives us a chance to get one more ad read in here, and that is asking you that um, are you uh, whoops wrong one? Did you find yourself bitten by the golf bug during this past season, but figured out your golf swing needs some help? Mike Andrews and BJ Golf Professional with the Morris County Park Commission courses can help. Contact Mike through BeginGolfNow.com to get your swinging gear for the upcoming season and add some more fun to your game. Indoor off-season instruction also available. BeginGolfNow.com. Wow. So you were saying? The fact that Roxbury now in this situation has a chance to retie this thing is, I think, the most shocking part of it all. On into the zone. Westergaard and Kuyenga on the assist. 22 to go. This is lobbed up and down. Now going to the bench is Callahan. Extra attacker is on. Moving ahead here is Jenkins. Jenkins shooting and a save made. Rebound oh. popped loose all the way down. Empty net. Good. Wow. Mac Goggin from 150. It's 8 6 with five seconds to go. Incredible. You had to throw it all. You had to just get it out there, and it went on net exactly the way you wanted it to, and bullseye. And Mendham will survive. 
And Tambuwala is going to get an assist on that, the goaltender. Ooh. He made the save that Goggin picked up. And this one, I mean, I haven't seen an 8-6 game since uh, Rangers Winnipeg Jets game back in 1982 or something like that. This is picked up, put along the boards. There's the buzzer. And a senior night win for Mendham. Yeah. Mendham Magic. We back with the three stars of the game in a moment here on Mars Sussex Sports. Demand is greatest. It's a new day in Sussex County, and the internet will never be the same. Get connected at getplanetfiber.com. That's getplanetfiber.com. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. Rich Latman, realtor with Keeneland Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com. So it's been four years since I got the Neograft hair transplant procedure done, and I look and feel good when I look in the mirror. Guys, I know there's a lot of cures out there for hair loss, but the best solution is to ask your doctor about the Neograft hair transplant. There's no linear scar, little to no downtime, and it's your own hair going back on your head, and that is amazing. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Nussbaum. If you're struggling with thinning hair or hair loss, we can help you. Visit us at MyFullHair.com. That's MyFullHair.com. Back here at Menin Arena, final score 8-6 in favor of Mendham in a wild second and third period, really. I did not even get to catch the shots on goal in the, in the game. Um, trying, I'm trying to see if I can find out. 40-25 uh, to 25 in favor yep. of the Minutemen. Yeah, that's what it was. Just an absolutely wild game, a seven-goal third period. For Mendham, uh, wins this game by a final score of eight to six. So third period, at 16 shots for the Minutemen, a game total of 40, and nine for Roxbury, a game total of 25. The staggering number here is both teams scored three goals on the power play. Um, it was it was just it was wild, Sean. It was wild, and ultimately the team that. The team that said the uh, the magic words a couple times too many ended up doing themselves in with the comeback um, by Mendham, and that's uh, pretty much what it bo that's pretty much what it boils down to. And uh, you know, it's just these this kind of a game. This is a game that, especially at the point in the season that it had happened here, this is a kind of a game that can just absolutely shift the rest of the way that the season goes um, out there for for Roxbury it, you know because you're going to go into a game now every time you're going to have a multiple goal lead that's going to creep into your head every single right. time and, it, and you can deny it all you want if you think you don't it does it, and that's the whole that's the whole thing I think for Roxbury going forward is how do they respond to this by the way all six power plays for Mendham came in the third period both teams three for six on the power play 
Three stars in a game brought to you by X Hockey Products Pro Shop and DiscountHockey.com. They are proud to support New Jersey high school hockey. From sharpenings and repairs to custom uniforms and apparel, they are your trusted local supplier. If you can't find what you need in the store, DiscountHockey.com ships in one day to New Jersey. Our three stars in a game. There are plenty of players who put in great efforts tonight. The three stars go is this. Third star, Mac Goggin. Two goals and an assist to get that comeback started for West Mars Men- uh, Mendham. Uh, by the way, honorable mention, Liam Lloyd, a goal and an assist. But uh, Goggin, two goals and one assist, gets the third star. Uh, Kyle Jenkins, two goals and two assists. He gets our number two star. He from Roxbury. Tristan Aiken had three goals and two assists, gets the number one star. And again, it, it's this was one nothing, Mendham after one, 4-1 Roxbury after two, 5-1 Roxbury 36 seconds into the third period and you're thinking a four goal margin that's gonna that should do it but Mendham comes up with six consecutive goals they score seven times in the third period to erase a 5-1 deficit and win this by eight to six Sean and you know it's just it just again it's you know the physicality you know you, you have to be able to maintain you got to be able to maintain your cool in, in those kind of physical moments um you know Roxbury had a couple things you know go against them and unfortunately due to the fact that they due to the fact that you know it did go against them um the response was the response unfortunately caused them to get into even a deeper hole and and both of those times I think you you mentioned uh both of those times Mendham was able to score and you know it, it's a it's a combination of that with the change of the of the offense along with the four check that was working in the first period and then crashing one two and even sometimes three on ryan callahan he can't stop what he can't see especially when there's two or three in the crease along with him and so we'll roll, th- roll through the highlights one more time again the final score eight to six in favor of mendham they beat roxbury mendham now three three and two overall three one and two in the Halverson division. Roxbury drops to six and five and three and four in the division. Mendham now jumps them for second place. And these two teams will probably see each other in a semifinal. Boy, will that be fun. Uh, But the clock strikes 10 o'clock here at Menon Arena. That finishes this one. We have three more games coming up for you tomorrow starting at 4 p.m. right here on Mars Sussex Sports. We hope that you tune in then. Jordan Catelli, he brought the gear and turned it all on out here tonight. Did an excellent job. Well done, Jordan, uh, producing this one tonight. Sean Bretherick doing the camera work and the color commentary as well. Thank you very much, Sean. Well done job out of you. I'm stumbling on myself. We want to thank you, the fans, for tuning in to this presentation of the MCSS IHL here on Mario Sussex Sports. You're seeing it was 5-1. We're not lying. And then it became... 6-5 6-5 in a matter of moments. Our final score, Mendham 8, Roxbury 6. A wild, wild game here tonight that sees the Minutemen come from behind to get the win. For all of us here on Mars Sussex Sports, I'm Brett Luther. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow night here at Menon Arena. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow. Here's a one-timer score! Out here's Lloyd. Feeds out front. Aiken head score! It's a hatch by Mendham. Here's a wrist shot score!